In this video you'll see the complete installation of an eco hitch receiver and Tecancha direct plug-in trailer lighting harness on the 2022 Toyota Sienna. To do that uh, you take out the four body screws on each side and pull the uh, tail lamp assembly out and rotate each one of the sockets to release the bulbs and the wiring harnesses that go into that tail lamp, lamp assembly and this final little one you need to kind of carefully wiggle back and forth to disconnect it. In my mind this eco hitch receiver is probably the best one on the market right now that's available uh, looking at some of the other options. It's uh, very low profile, it's hidden and it has a very finished OEM look when it's installed and it's also very high quality um, stainless steel powder coated it also is one of the only ones that I know of um, that doesn't block the kick sensor if you have that option on your vehicle. To finish taking off the bumper cover to install this hitch, you take out the screws in the bottom uh, of the mud flap connecting it to the fender liner in the back as well as the clip on each side. And there's additionally um, another splash shield on the driver's side that you need to take off to give yourself access to the frame to bolt the new receiver in. A few more body clips and then with the 10 millimeter socket there's a body screw on the front that you have to take out and a bolt on the back that you got to take out as well. And that'll allow you to remove that splash shield. A few more clips. We'll take the bumper cover off the rest of the way. We start on the outside edge and pop the first clip free, and then you can slide your hand behind the bumper cover there and sort of unzip it and snap your way around. Repeat the process over on the other side. and set that aside for now. Next we're going to remove the bumper itself, the actual metal part of the bumper that, that reinforces and gives the strength to the bumper assembly. We're going to pop off these two clips that hold this harness onto the top of it. Then we're going to peel back the tape and we're going to take out three nuts on each side that will be reused for the installation of the new receiver. There's two on the top and one on the bottom. Those come out with a 14 millimeter socket. You don't have to worry about um, keeping this pretty or anything. Is this is going to be a part that will not be reinstalled? And the new receiver hitch will act as the new bumper. Then you can unplug this module here which is probably controlling the proximity sensors that go up into the tail lamps for your lane departure and whatnot. That's what I believe it is. Also have to modify this um, little bracket down here and cut off a section so that the bracket will fit in place with the new receiver that comes with the new receiver. You can plug that in and route it behind there and it doesn't get smashed. You pull out these three uh, thread covers on the frame uh, on the bottom side and then poke the bolt and washer through on the forward most hole um, oriented to the outside And we'll get a few nuts started. Again, those are the original nuts that came off the bumper. And then we'll put the rest of our bolts and washers on. Just loosely fit for now. Double check in this harness here. And that does not get smashed when it's fully seated. So we're okay to continue. And then start snugging them up. We snugged up the, the rear nuts first. And since we have all the other ones started, 
we went ahead and snugged up the other bracket nuts and bolts as well. And finally the ones where the bracket goes into the frame on the bottom side. And that's the installation of the receiver hitch before putting the cover back on. Now we're going to install the trailer lighting harness. To do that we're going to remove some trim panels and give ourselves access to that driver's side back panel area. This clip in the baggage compartment just pulls straight out. And then the panel itself you can pull back um, if you break a few clips, they are replaceable. Um, if you go to your dealer, they're fairly inexpensive. There's a couple of tie downs in the baggage compartment and then the rear seat belt that will need to come out as well. You can take out the bottom bolt on that. Then there's a, a rear ambient temperature sensor or speaker of some kind for a little alarm or beeper. I'm pretty sure it's the ambient temperature sensor for the rear heating and air conditioning system and then this panel will come out of the way there's a manual release for the fuel door back here that you can uh, unhook and I don't have video of that but you'll see us hook it back up here in a little bit and then for the wiring harness the factory provides a connector to tie into and with our Taconcha direct plug-in trailer lighting harness you just plug right into that and then we oversize the hole in that unit just a little bit that little module because there's a couple of studs down in that area that you can just mount it over top of and then there's another one right next to it that we are going to use as a ground post so we're kind of cleaning up the threads and abrasing the using some abrasive on the paint there to give that good contact for the ground and uh, put a nut on there. This is a metric nut. I believe it's a six millimeter um, nut with a 10 millimeter head and then zip tying the harness back into the original position. There's a rubber grommet in close proximity that will make a small slice in at the center to poke the uh, trailer connector down through the harness there. Feed that through all the way and then reinstall that grommet. And that's going to be routed over to the receiver and we went along the top of it and zip tied it in a few places and it ended up being just a little bit short as we got over there so we pulled it through the harness or we rotated the little module a little bit and pulled a little bit more harness through and that gave us just the right amount of length to get to our receiver a few more zip ties And she's looking good. Now it's back on with the interior panel. It mostly just snaps in place everywhere. Working it a little bit. And then hook up the fuel door release again there. And bolt back on these baggage compartment tie downs with a 10 millimeter socket install our artificial spare tire again install the little temperature sensor just snaps and pushes back in and then this is an eight passenger version so that seat goes back in and snap back in this little bag compartment tie down thing again install the rest of our panels this last one and now we're going to need to modify uh, make a small cutout in the bottom of this bumper cover and uh, the amount they have you cut out is about four and a quarter inches which is pretty generous and I'd recommend maybe going just a touch narrower but you'd center that on the bumper cover and take that out and uh, we used a pocket knife to clean up our, our edge there that we'd cut and then it's back on with the cover and just slide that back in place and then snap it in to, to start you want to orient the mud flaps to the inside of the fender well to get the right fit And it's 
back in with the body screws and the tail lights. And then there's a few places you need to align it as you press it into place and then just slide it forward and it will snap in. And then put in the two body screws to secure it in place. Add our body clips and then there's uh, that splash shield. There's now a bracket that would interfere with that so you have to notch it in the direction say to cut out a fairly again generous cut out here. Um, I would make that about half the size, not quite so big of a cutout. As you can see there, just as little as you need. And put our clips in and um, our final screws and the screws and hold that second splash shield in place there and our mud flaps. And you can see that that looks really sharp and very clean look. It doesn't stick down all across the bottom. Back on with the wheels. I hope you found this video useful. I appreciate you watching and I hope you like and subscribe.